Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And today, this is the sixth episode of my React JS course. In this video, we're going to be learning really important stuff. The first thing we're going to go over is um, a lot of conceptual stuff related to what exactly the React JS component lifecycle is. And then I'm going to explain to you guys how to use the use effect hook to manipulate components, um, depending on where in their lifecycle stage they are, right. So I'm going to go over all of this in this single video. And I'm really excited to show you guys the examples. If you're interested in checking out the code for the video, it's going to be all in the description. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So in order to start explaining how lifecycle works in react and how um, the use effect hook works in react as well. I want to first, uh, I created this example over here, um, that is going to be able to explain to you guys exactly how everything works. But I also want to give you guys some terminology before we start working with this. So lifecycle, like the word um, says, it's basically a description of how a component, uh, like the life cycle of a component just explains how um, everything happens from the birth of a component to the death of a component. Obviously, that's an analogy. But um, everything that happens from the beginning till the end. So there's three three different stages um, in the react life cycle. There's the mounting stage, there's the updating stage, and there is the unmounting stage. So the important word to know here, which you might not know is mounting and unmounting. Basically, uh, just think of mounting as the component appearing in the screen or the component um, starting to exist in your project. Um, and unmounting being the opposite of that. So the components stop appearing in the screen. So in in a website, uh, that would be the an element, a component that represents a bunch of um, HTML elements or JSX elements, um, suddenly appearing in the source code, and then unmounting would be basically that disappearing. And then updating, you guys might know what the word means, it just means that um, that component it is changing the UI or and, and it, whatever it's returning inside of the component is changing, depending on something um, such as for example, a prop has changed or a state inside of the component has changed or something like that, right. So those are the three words that we need to understand, because those are the three stages of a react component lifecycle. Now, we can see this existing and working very easily by creating a simple project that showcases this. So there's many different projects that you can just create to to showcase that um, this one over here, I find it to be pretty simple. And it just uses stuff that we've done in the previous episode. So I find it to be really cool. Um, basically, we have over here, uh, our app component. And inside of it, we have um, a state called show text, which is um, just a boolean true or false, and a button which when we click on it, it should change the value of the state to the opposite of what it is right now. So if it's false, and we click on the button, now it will become true. And the state is used to determine if this other component called text is being is appearing on the screen or not. Now this other component called text is pretty simple as well. All it has is this other state called text, which is a string. And um, we're showcasing it on the screen over here inside of a header tag. But every time we type on an input, um, it will change the value of that text. And you can see this working over here, because um, basically, we have the show text button, and uh, show text um, state is false. When I click on this, the text component appears, and I can start um, changing the value of the text um, state, right. And if I want to basically turn it off, I can just click on show text again, and it will disappear. Now you can easily see here the three stages of a react component lifecycle, because if we inspect element, which is something I would recommend you guys get really familiar with, because um, it helps a lot with any kind of web development, not just react. Um, and we open our screen over here, we try to navigate through all our app, we see right now inside of the div with the class app, which is where our whole app exists, there's only a button, right? So this stuff over here, all of this UI over here is not currently in our code. And that makes sense because it's not being shown, right? But when I click on this, now this div appears. So this div represents the text component, which means that right now what happened is we just mounted this component into our project. So this component was not existing inside of our project or inside of our um, inside of our web page, and now it is existing. 
Now, if we open this up, you can see there's an input and there's an H1 tag. The H1 tag is obviously empty because the text state is empty initially. And the input is over here, just chilling, nothing is happening to it. So what we can do now is we can start typing on this. And you'll see immediately that um, the code inside of this um, component over here is changing, right? It's updating in real time because we are updating our component. So this is the second stage of the React lifecycle. You can see it is literally updating as we go. Now we want to see the last stage, right? So unmounting. If we click on this over here, it's going to go back to what it was before. Now we don't have that um, div anymore, which means we don't have that component anymore. Now, this is extremely important to understand, because in a lot of times you want to make your components as efficient and um, make them just work exactly how you want them to work. So understanding um, how a component exists and and the life cycle stages of it um, is extremely important. And there is one specific concept that will encapsulate all of that um, in react and it's called the use effect hook. So back in the days, um, there was actually three different methods that you might have seen if you're digging up react code, you might have seen something like component did mount or something like this, um, ignore this kind of uh, stuff. If you see it in the internet, that's all like old react, that's when class components was a thing. Um, so if you see that, don't worry, you don't need to learn that. What you need to learn is that there is a hook in react called the use effect hook. This is one of the most important hooks in react. In my opinion, it is the second most important one before the use state. Although I can argue that you can have a project without a use state hook, but you cannot have a project without a use effect hook. So the use effect hook is a hook that is used um, to basically control what happens depending on which stage of your components lifecycle it is. So with this hook over here, this simple function over here, we can we can create some sort of action that will be triggered when the component is mounting, or when the component is updating or when the component is unmounting. So that's something extremely cool. Um, because it, it all exists. Um, and you can do all of that inside a single um, hook inside of single function. So I know that might seem a little bit confusing if this is the first time you're working with a use effect. So I'll give you guys a very easy example, just continuing with whatever we have over here. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So I'll come over here. And if you want to use the use effect hook, all you have to do is you just have to say use effect, and just open and close parentheses, and then put a function inside of the use effect. So like this, just a, a function that exists inside of this. Now the use effect, um, by default, what it does is whatever you put inside of here, as of right now, it will call, for example, I'll console log a message over here saying component mounted, like this component mounted. And when the component mounts, this will be console logged. That's all it will do right now. You'll see that this happens because if I refresh my page, go to my console, and I click on this button, it will say component mounted. Now there's a thing you might be wondering, why did it console log twice? Now, if you watch tutorials about the use effect before early this year, which is 2022, you might know that people might say that this only console log once, it's because react updated, I don't want to get too in depth uh, about what happens here. But I want to emphasize that because that can confuse a lot of beginners. What's happening here is now what react does is if you have this thing over here called the strict mode, it is supposed to help you write better code. That's the whole point of it. So if you have that currently in your project, it will do it will console log twice. Um, and you see I just removed and it. it will only console log once. Um, because what react does is it's basically checking to see if you're handling your use effects correctly. Again, I won't explain that right now, I'll explain it at the end of the video for only for those who are interested. It's actually a pretty interesting topic. But for now, just imagine that the use effect um, only run once. Let's just imagine that I'll actually keep this console logged, because um, it's better for for you to understand it this way. So as of right now, the use effect only is calling itself when the component has mounted. And you'll see that um, oh, I need to save this like this, I need to do this. So as of right now, you can see that when the component mounts, it says component unmounted, I will un I'll unmount it again, and then I'll mount it again, and you'll see it will console log again. So the use effect right now is allowing us to execute an action 
exactly when the component mounts, which is something we have never done before. So what what kind of action could we put over here? Well, in the beginning, this is very useful for when you, for example, have a page where you need to make an API call to get data from somewhere. Immediately when you go into the web page, you just put it over here. And what happens is when you go into that specific page, it will fetch the data immediately and display in the screen. That's a very, very easy example on why you might want to do something like this, right? Why you might want to execute some sort of action when the comp when the component appears or when the component mounts. Now, as you can see over here, this is as it is right now, it's only executing an action on one of the three stages of a react components lifecycle. So how would we make it so that we can console log when it's updating and we can console log when it's unmounting, we want to see if we can actually um, detect and trigger some sort of action when those two stages are occurring. So for actually updating, it's actually pretty simple. So with the use effect over here, this will be called every single time there's a state change. So what I mean by that is whenever this component re renders, um, whatever is inside of here will be called again. So what happens is if the component itself updates in any way, it can either be a prop that is receiving changes, or a state inside of it like this one over here changes, then this will be called again. So let's see if that actually happens. So you'll see it will be called once because it mounted. And now if I change a state inside of this component, it will keep calling itself. Meaning that um, over here, whatever we put inside of here, as it is right now, will also be called when the component is updating. So the two stages are now being triggered. Now there's a caveat, what if we only want to console log this, if it's mounted, but not when it's updating? Well, the use effect hook allows us to put an array over here. And this array basically tells us we can specify what props or state changes we want to trigger the use effect. So if I put the text over here, then what will happen is the same thing would happen, right? Um, it will console log and trigger the use effect hook, whatever is inside of here, every time the text changes. So the same thing was happening. But if I remove the text from here, you'll see that now it doesn't trigger it anymore. Only the mounting triggers. So if you want to execute an action only once when the component mounts, you put an empty array over here. But most importantly, if you want to trigger an action every time a specific state changes or many different states changes, you can just put them over here, for example, putting the text over here. This is really cool. And it comes in handy in so many situations. So it is extremely important for you to understand how this works. However, I know that since this is the first time you're probably seeing the use effect hook, it will be hard to come up with examples in your head and see the how useful this is. But don't worry, I have that in mind, we're going to be using this a lot, especially in the next video. Now, we've done two different stages. What is the third stage of a, a react components lifecycle? Well, it's unmounting, how do we execute an action when the component disappears? So with the use effect, we can return a function. And this function over here, will be executed when the component amounts. So if we want to console log, for example, something saying component um, unmounted like this. So now if we remove this over here, I want to remove it just so you guys can um, see this working better. Um, what will happen is immediately when we show the text, the component, it should console log that the component was mounted. And if we decide to not show it anymore, it will console log that the component was unmounted. So I'll come over here, refresh the screen, show the text, it will say component mounted, and then remove it and you'll see, you'll see that it says component unmounted. So we are triggering both things immediately. So how can this be useful? There's many different situations. Imagine that you're, um, you want to make, a, I don't know, a request to a service, uh, an API, when you render a component. So when a component mounts, you want to make a request to an API and continuously make that request. But then when the component disappears, you want to stop that request. Well, you can put the, the logic for making the request over here, and put the logic for stop like to, the logic for stopping to make that request over here. So this serves for you to kind of clean up um, the mess you made, um, not the mess you made, but like whatever logic you put over here, if it's a logic that might cause leaks after this, you, you might want to fix it over here. So that's basically it for um, the use effect hook. 
Now, again, I know that um, it might not seem that useful right now because I'm just using console logs. But the next episode is where I show you guys the first major example of using the use effect inside of your project. It is, in my opinion, the, the main one you use in the beginning. Um, afterwards, you'll, you'll be using this all the time when you get more advanced in React. But um, I just needed to make this video first so you guys could have an idea. Now, I want to explain to you guys the whole uh, streak mode thing. So if you're not interested in that, you can just go to the next episode. If you're interested, I'll go over why um, this thing makes the request in the use effect twice or makes the use effect run twice. So stick around for that. So basically, we have over here what is known as strict mode. So I mentioned to you guys that strict mode over here is a way for React to kind of help us write better code, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, React has certain rules um, inside of their project that a lot of people like not following. Um, and strict mode will make some checks for you um, while you're writing your code and prevent you from making those mistakes. I would always recommend keeping this on because if you're make if you're writing some code that um, strict mode is not allowing you to, you should probably not be writing that code. Um, so just removing it is kind of redundant because you're literally doing something that is an anti pattern, something that react doesn't recommend. And it doesn't matter what use case you have, you, you're running into, there's always a solution and strict mode is just telling you that the one you have right now, it's not the best one. So that's a little bit of a rant for those who don't want to use strict mode. Um, in my opinion, you have to. And what happens over here with the component mount uh, running twice is that if I go over here right now into our project, right, with strict mode, and I show the text, you'll see that what happens is the component mounted once, the component unmounted right after it, and then the component mounted again. So that's something interesting to see, right? Um, we thought it was running twice. But what is really is happening is with strict mode, react forces the component to mount once, then unmount immediately after and then mount again. So that's just to check to see if your use effect is running correctly. Because if you messed up over here, like I said, you messed up and you wrote some code that can cause some leak. So if you wrote some code over here that can cause some type of leak, or some some type of memory leak, then you react, you will know because uh, what happens is uh, it, react will force the component to unmount, meaning the leak will will become evident. And then it will mount again. Now what happens is if your code is running correctly, meaning that whatever uh, logic you put over here, you're cleaning up on the unmounting stage, then it shouldn't have any issues with it because what it's going to happen is it's going to mount for a sec for like a small amount of time, then re immediately unmount. So if your component is running correctly, um, everything should remain the same. And then it's going to run mount again to actually run the use effect like you intended to. So this is just a way to check to see if you wrote your code correctly. If you didn't, then immediately you'll see everything will be breaking. There's infinite examples of this. But um, like I said, since this is the first time you guys are le learning use effects, um, it might get kind of confusing if I just went on a rant about um, different use cases of this when you guys might have never used the use effect before this video. So um, this will become really more evident as we go on into the series. There's actually a really cool video um, from another YouTuber, which goes over just this specific topic, um, meaning the, the use effect calling twice. I'll, pro I'll probably tag it up here on the video if you're interested in checking it out. Um, it's really interesting. So with that in mind, this was it for the video. There's no exercise in this video. It's the only video with no exercises because it's hard to come up with an exercise for the use effect when we haven't learned stuff like API requests or, or something like that. But keep in mind, that's going to be in the next few videos. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting two to three times a week and I'm really enjoying this course. So I would massively appreciate it if you guys could help support the channel and I see you guys next time.